Muy buenas tardes, mi raza. Happy, happy Super Bowl Monday to you. That's what I call it because everybody's hungover and nobody goes to work. So it should be a holiday, right? Let's start a petition and sign it in and send it out. Super Bowl Monday. Makes all the sense. Congratulations to Kansas City. They won yesterday. If you live under a rock or if you didn't understand what you were watching, final score was 25 to 22. So the best team won. And that's what it was. This was our 58th Super Bowl, by the way. So if you don't know how to count Roman numerals, I will help you. <laughs> Amazing, guys, how traditions continue, right? You get together, play ball real quick, and next year let's do it again and just keep doing it until 58 years pass. And there it is. People grow dependent on it. Bets here, bets there. I don't know. Did you guys bet on anything? I heard Taylor Swift's appearance was a big bet. They were betting how many times she would be on camera. So drop a comment, let me know about that, because yeah, they get fun. So since Super Bowl is what I am talking about, let's get into the topic for today. I know it is not Super Bowl, but it is Super Bowl related-ish, kind of poquito. It is actually a really spooky one, or drippy one, or just something to think about. I'll let you guys decide at the end. So, let's talk about this. The movie Poltergeist. Do you remember the little girl, mommy, mommy, the TV, and they're back and all that mess? Yes, I'm talking about the 1982 movie, The Poltergeist. So, you're probably thinking, what about it? What does that have anything to do with Super Bowl? What are you talking about? Okay. Deja y les explico. So there's a scene where the little girl, the little blonde girl, her name is Carol Ann, is sitting on her brother's side of the room. So behind her, you can see a poster that reads Super Bowl 1988. Okay, so if you were paying attention just to what I said a few seconds ago, I just said it was the Poltergeist, the first movie, from 1982 so now here we are why would they put a setting six years into the future who knows nobody knows this has been a bit unknown what the heck what were they thinking what's really going on discussion that has gone on in forums for a long time now on the bottom of this poster it reads rookie of the year blah 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 so since it is on the brother's side of the room supposedly they say that the little brother had drawn this poster put it up because he eventually wanted to be part of the super bowl in 1988 Okay, now here is where this story gets, like, really, really weird, right? So, obviously, it is not the official Super Bowl poster. So, yeah, you know, whatever. That's just, like I said, something really odd and weird. So, the official one, the official poster of the Super Bowl that year shows that they played in San Diego. I wasn't, like, into that in 88. I was only four years old, so I wouldn't know. But if you guys were of age and you remember, or if you guys want to Google and check it out, or if you guys just want to check out the video, there it is, the poster. And it says 1988. Okay, but, 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 there is a but. The weird part now is that this little girl, Carol Ann, her real name is Heather O'Rook, actually passed away on Super Bowl Sunday, which was February 1st, 1988. Again, this whole thing gets so weird because she was actually living in San Diego as well. So, yeah, what the heck, right? Like, here she is filming this movie six years prior here it is, six years forward. She's in San Diego. It's Super Bowl 
Sunday and she passes away. Hmm. Really, really weird, right? Like, coincidence? Was it predictions that they were doing? Like, what was even the point of this poster being dated six years forward? It is so weird, right? Like, think about it. Huh. Okay, so this little niña, la güerita, um, Heather, her real name, she was only six years old when she played that first Poltergeist movie. Now, there is a part two and a part three, and I believe she plays uh, her role in each movie. And like I mentioned, she had moved out to San Diego where she lived with her parents. And you know, whatever, she lived her life. She was 12 years old when she passed away. Now, let me tell you about this poor little baby. She was a little girl. Um, she had a illness that she lived with all her life and she was misdiagnosed with what it was. Now they had told her she had Crohn's disease. So, you know, she had a lot of bloating here and there. If you watch the other movies, you can tell esta mas cachetona and things like that. And that's when she had her, like, I guess, um, flare ups or whatever you call it when she was sick with her Crohn's disease. But in all reality, she was suffering from a condition that is called congenital intestinal abnormality. So what did that mean? Um, her intestines were obviously abnormal. So she had a hard time digesting. She had a hard time with all that belly problems, issues, whatever you want to call it. So what happened the time she passed away, the whole event that happened was um, she was really sick that week, very, very sick, but her mom thought she had the flu because she was going through um, fevers and, you know, this, 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 and that. So they had her in bed, but this little girl wanted to go to school, you know, she don't want to be home. She's like, Mom, just give me medicine and chill. I want to go to school. So that Friday, she went to school. She went to school very sick, complaining también from la panza, y que she just didn't feel well, super hot, the fever, this and that. When she came home, she was like super boiling. Her mother gave her some medicine, told her get to bed. Um, hopefully you get better. If not, we're gonna obviously go see the doctor because you've been really sick all week. So yeah, se, se bañó, she drank her medicine, went to bed you know, hung out the rest of the evening on Friday. So Saturday, she was worse. She was very bad. All day, she woke up just in bad shape. She was getting worse as the day was, you know, playing out. Once it got late evening, the mom was like, we're just gonna call the ambulance and have you taken to the hospital because you're not getting any better. The medication's not helping you in any way. You know, I don't know what the hell kind of flu this is. And it was serious stuff, you know, it was ugly. So, yeah, the ambulance came. They rushed her to the children's hospital. And after doing testing and this and that, that's when they, there in that hospital, the children's hospital, found that she had issues with the intestinal tract. So, se había reventado la tripa the bowel it, it, it ruptured in her stomach her um, intestine and um, that's where the fevers were coming from this and that like it was bad it was all bad really bad so they were trying to rush her into surgery to do a corrective um, intestinal procedure and it was just bad really bad um, they tried to correct it but next morning, early morning, Sunday morning, which was February 1st, 1988, Heather passed away from cardiac arrest that was um, due to all the like shock her body went through, the septic shock, everything that had just gone through um, with the surgery and stuff. So that was her cause of death. All right, guys, so that's where everybody starts gay. Oh my God, what about the poster? Did they predict that was going to be the end of her? I don't know, guys. You decide. There are so many rumors around this film, this movie. It's supposedly that cursed and blah, blah, blah. Now, let me tell you, if you've never heard before, producer on this was um, Steven Spielberg. Now, the area.
area where they used this house to film was on an actual like burial site it really was so that in the movie is correct um there is a whole um scene that was filmed where at the end when all shit breaks loose in the movie and everything like the wind and the pool the pool whole scene those skeletons you guys see in there were actual body skeletons real ones they weren't reproduced they weren't plastic none of that supposedly the word said that back in that time it was cheaper to use real people live skeletons than to try to order plastic reproduced ones that were fake because that wasn't really what was being manufactured back then so it took forever to make first of all and second of all they were very costly so steven spielberg said we're gonna use real bones real skeletons shoot the damn movie now this is where the big time rumors come that obviously you're messing with dead people where's the respect of course things are gonna happen and you know curses or whatever like i mean they can lose this consent and pass right this movie was released on june 4th of 1982 and let me tell you guys there was a second cast member there's a total of i believe four deaths period but right now i'm just throwing these out there the girl that played her older sister in the movie she also passed away she was actually strangled in her own driveway by her ex-boyfriend on november 4th of 1988 he thought he left her for dead in the driveway but she was still alive sadly she never bounced back from that whole situation so she fell into a coma for five days then she passed away so that adds to the whole thing like the movie's cursed everything about it is cursed i don't know guys that's for you to come to conclusion theorize on it let me know what you guys think drop me a message and let's talk because this is weird right like huh think about it so much coincidence behind this whole super bowl poster all right guys i hope the crew is treating you well if you haven't had your mariscos with extra tapatio go get some grab yourself a nice little michilada mix it up and don't drink so much next time guys i'm just playing that's the beauty of super bowl right don't even know what's going on you're just drinking and waiting for the show at least that's what i do anyways guys con eso los dejo pasen bonito día may you guys have a blessed week very productive one by the way y los adoro guys bye